Um, meal time is an excellent time for enrichment. Um, there's actually a phenomenon in behavior called contra freeloading um, uh, that many animals, most animals, actually prefer food that they have to work for over free food, right? So like they have experiments that they've done where they have like, you know, food just tossed on the ground or they have food that, that the dog has to like do a puzzle for, the dog will go for the puzzle toy. Uh, same with uh, some uh, cats and, and a few other species as well. So we love giving, um, giving our dogs uh, puzzles to do uh, for their dinner, um, for their breakfast, um, or even just for treats. So foraging, we definitely do this uh, for dinner every single day. Um, and you know, if you ever want to make extra enrichment for a dog, um, we could even just do it with treats. So it's very important that y'all know that there is a feeding chart, um, up here in the kitchen. This will tell you how much food, um, the dogs get, uh, what kind of food they get. It will also tell you how they like to be fed. So most dogs, um, prefer just foraging. So there are lots and lots of different ways we can do foraging. Um, we can do wobblers where you actually like put the food in there and the dog has to, you know, knock it around to knock it out. Um, one of our, um, favorite ones that we do are slow feeders. Um, these, we, they're definitely like super, super easy for us to make. I will say we make these a lot. So if you can ever, you know, get, get more creative than a slow feeder, That'll be great. If you go with a slow feeder, that's totally fine too. Some dogs love it. Um, and that was a, most of our slow feeders are plastic. We do also have metal slow feeders. Some of our dogs um, really, really like chewing on the plastic slow feeders. So they all get metal slow feeders. And again, we will tell you on the feeding chart who gets what. Um, we have puzzle feeders. Um, definitely talk to a staff member about uh, which dog should get puzzle feeders because they definitely have to like learn how to do it. So they'll need a staff member to, to um, sit in there and, and train them. Um, so, but we have tons and tons of different puzzles. So if you want to give them their dinner um, or their treats and that, that's a great idea. Um, we also have tug of jugs, towel treasure hunts. We got so many things. Um, or if you hear of an idea and you want to bring it up to a staff member, please do so. Um, giving food to dogs. So like, you know, once you have dinner made, um, giving food to dogs is a BV2 plus activity because of, you know, resource guarding and all that. So definitely, definitely, definitely do your BV2 training. We're very excited for y'all to go through that. Um, and for now, uh, you'll have to, uh, talk to a staff member about, you know, the, the staff member will be delivering, uh, all the foraging items to the dogs. And, um, Sometimes, you know, they can do foraging in the living room or in the backyard or something. There are sometimes, um, there are locations where you could actually watch and see the dog having a ton of fun with their foraging. So you can talk to a staff member about that. Um, I lose all the points because I forgot Kongs, which are so important. Kongs are amazing. Every dog loves a Kong. <laughs> um, and that was up. Did I forget something? Oh my God, I lose all the points. This is my favorite foraging, favorite foraging item, snuffle mats. Um, sniffing, licking too, L licking is coming for dogs, but sniffing and, and having to forage around like inside of snuffle mats is so calming and relaxing for dogs. So um, literally like all this, all you have to do is like sprinkle food on it. And you know, a staff member will give it to the dog. It's super, super easy to put together. And oh my God, it's so good for our dogs. So thank you so much camera person for reminding me that I forgot the best foraging toy in the world. Um, yes, yeah, supplements are great. So um, have fun with foraging.